Yes, um, I like to talk about mass incarceration. Uh, I have uh, four brothers. One is currently in jail. Uh, my brothers have uh, been in and out of jails mostly all their lives. But in different times, they try to do the right thing. Go to work, get off of drugs, you know, but it's always been stumbling blocks. You know, they can't get food stamps. They can only get this amount of money. And, uh, you know, it's hard to get grants to go to school. You can't get no job, and McDonald's even have a felony thing on, on their uh, applications. You know, uh, <clears throat> they say, some of them say they only go, they go 10 years back. You know, uh, some people can change and have five years clean. That don't even matter. It doesn't matter. So what are they going to do? Even if you have a felony, that shouldn't deprive you of getting food stamps in a, a grant. You don't know who's trying to feed their family. That will make a lot of people go back to doing wrong. It's the way the system is made up. It's made up to make people go around and around and around. You don't give them a chance. You know, you got little programs that get you so far. You know, and you're still in poverty. These people got two and three jobs. They grandmothers have to keep their kids, you know. And it's really hard. Y'all just don't know. Y'all not in our shoes. Y'all sitting back taking the money from the people who really need it. The people who are working to keep this state healthy. We do all the work. We do all the grunt work. And y'all take the money from us when we need it. Y'all don't never talk about poverty. You never want to, you want to say homelessness, but you don't want to take it where it really is at. Poverty. Everybody is below. That 99% thing, y'all not even want to hear it because it's true. It's true. If you come out here and don't go to Sacramento, go to West Oakland. Go to the lower bottom. Go to 98th and Eads. Go to 23rd Ave. Go somewhere like that so it can reflect what the seriousness of this issue is. Then you're dealing with substance abuse and now they're trying to cut that treatments out. You know, it's just really getting hard. My, I have an older brother that's currently in treatment now and he's doing pretty well so far. But when he gets out, you know, his past going to sh shut him down. It's a revolving door. I've seen it in my community all my life. All my life. I think that <clears throat> I too am a recovering addict. And I have some mental issues that allow me to get on SSI. And I believe that because, of, because I got on SSI, it made it, I think it's made it harder for me. You know, they evaluating me again. They're trying to cut me out. I just went to a, a, a doctor's interview when I finished all my yearly annual paper six months ago. You know, they want to know if I'm able to work. You know, I'm doing some things now, but it turns everything around. When you go put on the application and stuff, what was your last income? SSI. That stigmatized employers. I've, I've had it done to me. They look at me and like, uh, SSI, uh, they didn't, I didn't say disability. It's SSI, so they know it must be an emotional problem, you know, and that's hard to get over. He needs to stand up and go to Congress. You know, it's we the people, not them. It's we the people. And I think we need to mask it together, man, and don't and just do what we need to do. We can we can put some things into legislature. We can do that. We have voices. We are the 99 percent. Don't let that, you know, the police and all that stuff deter you from what you need to do. We can only we are the ones who can help ourselves and we need to stand together as one and tell them no more. No more.